Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna wrap up everything that kind of was shown off about Starfield during the past few days, you know, while Gamescom was going on. We heard things like 150 hours and Starfield is nothing. We had several interviews with Phil Spencer and even saw some information about modders will be able to create planets. So we're gonna go through all the things really over the past few days wrapping it up right here but we're going to start real quick with the poll results from last week and the question was do you have an idea for your first starfield character 19 percent of you said yep seen everything i need for my first character 38 percent of you said i have most of it thought out need to see a little bit more info 27 percent of you said i got a few things figured out still need to figure out a lot and 17 percent of you said no thought about my character i will figure it out when i get into to the game and that is fair enough i get it i don't want to think about it i just want to be in the moment so thanks for everybody for voting that was kind of interesting to see kind of just uh where we are on thinking about our, our first character or at least our first playthrough so in kicking off gamescom starfield actually led off first with a live action trailer that is kind of what you see going on here in the background and if you haven't seen it I will leave the link down below, but it was kind of cool. I'm not really a big live action trailer kind of person myself, mostly because I want to see I'd rather see gameplay than the live action trailer, but it was, it's still pretty cool to see. I thought the really cool part about the video was their take or their orchestral version of Elton John's Rocket Man was really, really well done and put into the video. So yeah, if you haven't seen that, I will leave that down in the description. Also kicking off Gamescom, Enon Zur, the composer for Starfield's music, actually played the Starfield theme on a piano there right at the start of Gamescom. So that was actually also pretty cool to see. So I'll leave that link down below as well. There was also new wallpapers that came out. They're on the Bethesda website. I'll leave that link down below. But what you see on the screen here was the gift that they actually put out on Twitter. So yeah, that was actually pretty cool to see. It's kind of a, a little bit of a live fiery effect there in the background. Really, really cool. It was also shown off at Gamescom that the Fallout series is going to become the prime video in 2024 was kind of shown off there. Also at Gamescom, there was a partnership with Temper, the mattress making company really soft mattresses anyways they made a custom starfield chair but this isn't just any chair it's actually an entire kind of like cockpit built out and guess what they are actually going to auction this thing off later this year now we don't know all the details that are going to go into possibly winning this but it's going to be for charity or something like that so when we get all the details i'll be sure to share that with you because who wouldn't want this as their gaming rig now at gamescom starfield actually had a presentation built in a 300 person theater and if you were at gamescom you could obviously go to the theater and check out the first few minutes of the starfield gameplay now the video footage hasn't been shown online and i'm kind of glad it hasn't of what they were showing at gamescom but ign does have about an eight minute video of two guys kind of talking and wrapping up really what was the beginning part of starfield i did watch that and i would say if you haven't watched that don't watch it i'm actually not even gonna leave the link below because to me they don't even show the gameplay so they're just kind of more of ruining the experience i would think of actually just playing the game so i wouldn't even worry about watching that i'm not even gonna leave the link down below but it is out there and that's kind of just me warning you i wouldn't really watch it so there you go we also got some more starfield merchandise they actually have a partnership with elgato for a wave 3 microphone and a stream deck both of these will be available on august 31st too bad they're not gonna be available earlier as i'd imagine a lot of people are going to have these things kind of already set up another thing that was announced was that they are actually going to be auctioning off a chance to win the chrono mark watch that is in starfield or in the starfield collector's edition so you will need to register with constellation for that chance we also got another starfield dev article this one was about zach wilson who seems to be one of the main devs around kind of the space experience and he actually talks about legendary ships so if you do want a full rundown of that article i did do a full read through and that link will be down below as well we also got the starfield twitter page to actually tweet out several several more of those timeline and pictures that they've kind of been doing really over the past couple of weeks and really they did one just about every day while gamescom was going on they even started a new series what well, i'm expecting to be a new series about companions in starfield and the first one that they actually did was on barrett so continue to kind of look out for that and i do update the community page for any of that new information like that that they do post as i'm not going to make a separate video for just that stuff 
So on August 24th, the Frequently Asked Questions page on Starfield went live. There are a few questions in here that are very important for you to know, especially for those that are wanting to play the game early with early access. Like this question right here. If I pre-order the physical version of Starfield Standard Edition and purchase the Premium Edition upgrade, will I get five days early access? If you purchase the physical version of the Starfield Standard Edition, you will not receive the game disc until the game launches on September 6th or later, depending on your retailer and selected shipping time. If you would like to purchase the physical premium upgrade, please ensure you're either a Game Pass subscriber or have purchased a digital edition of the standard either through Xbox Store or digital codes from your favorite retailer to participate in early access. There's another one right here with Constellation. This is very important for your Constellation edition, guys. For Constellation Edition, will the digital code be provided via email or in the case? Will players receive the edition before or at the start of early access? Constellation Editions include a code for the Digital Premium Edition, which includes early access. Retailers can deliver Constellation Editions beginning at 8 p.m. local time on August 31st. Check with your retailer to determine your pickup or delivery options. So there you go. I know a lot of people have been wondering, am I gonna be able to get my Constellation Edition in time for early access? And there you go. They're basically confirming that yes, you will be able to. Here's another one for you Steam players out there. Can players upgrade to premium premium via Steam. The premium edition upgrade for Steam will be available at launch on September 6th. It does not include early access. For early access on Steam, you can purchase the Starfield Premium Edition. If you've purchased the Standard Edition on Steam, you are able to refund the Standard and purchase the Premium on Steam at any time prior to September 6th. So really that kind of makes sense. I don't know why if you were on Steam, you're wanting to get the Standard Edition and then the Premium Edition upgrade. I think you'd want to get just get it all right there in the you know Starfield Premium Edition, you know the bundle all together. But there you go. Basically, they are clarifying that the premium edition upgrade will not be on Steam until September 6th, which will be after early access. So that's really the most important parts about the facts and early access. Now, moving over to some of the interviews. Well, we got interviews from Pete Hines and really Phil Spencer. So I'm going to focus on the Pete Hines interviews and a Q&A from Pete Hines first, and then I'll do Phil Spencer after that. So Pete Hines was actually the first interviewer on the Xbox live stream. And really, he had about 12 to 13, maybe 15 minutes, I guess, where they, he just kind of talked about a lot of different things. But I'm going to get to just really the things we need to know about the gameplay. If you want to see the whole thing, I'll actually leave a timestamp link down below because they don't actually separate it out into a different video. He talked about how large the game is and he spent about a hundred or so hours before Todd Howard had come to him to say, hey, I need you to do the main quest in this build. And then he went off and did the main quest, which took him roughly about 50 hours, he said. And then he said, it felt like I still hadn't done anything in the game or there was still so much to do in the game. So yeah, that's just kind of giving you the scope. And I'm gonna just go and hit on this point. There were several interviews really over the past couple of days where they all kind of said the same thing. There was like 100 to 150, 200 hours put into some of the builds, into some of the games, kind of testing different things. And and it felt like they hadn't really got into anything about Starfield. So that's just kind of telling you how much really the scope there is to kind of play in the Starfield galaxy, if you want to call it. Pete Hines also went on to say Xbox support for Starfield has been phenomenal. All the things they've kind of been doing, helping support the team, even giving the team extra time to build out the game that they wanted to build out. That is pretty good to hear. He also mentioned your experiences are going to be yours as he was referencing two employees from another office, but he was talking with them. He said these two employees put in about 40 to 60 hours each, but they didn't experience any of the same content. One person went off and did something a different direction. The other employee went off in another direction, experienced something totally different. So that was really cool to hear him talk about that even early on in the game, we're not gonna be walking down the same path, like almost early on in the game, like we're gonna be branching off and doing our own things. Everybody's gonna be having different experiences. Towards 
towards the end of the Xbox interview, Pete Hines actually issued a little bit of the warning to gamers. He said, do not ignore activities as they kind of branch and build into your own game, kind of lead you to different experiences. Maybe that's different quests and whatnot. But he said, don't ignore those. They actually are building blocks for different experiences. So that kind of wraps up basically his interview with Xbox. He actually then went later on and did a Q&A, which the fine folks at Reddit actually put into a pretty good little summary. The game doesn't really start until after the main quest. That's kind of crazy to think about. Hey, the game actually doesn't even end at the main quest. That's actually when it starts kind of wrap your head around that one says it's his favorite bethesda main quest ever he once accidentally got sucked into the vacuum of space because he boarded an enemy ship and the pilot took off yes i think we've even had todd howard even mention that before so i know i know a lot of people out there are going to be trying that one multiple passive point of interest across the galaxy to find an example he gave was a set of farms where the people give resources to the people of another planet modders will be able to create planets certain companions will get annoyed with you if you do bad things even companions who are really close to you lots of settlement with their own people and quests to find outside the major cities new game plus relates to the main story so he couldn't say a word on it says it's different from most new game plus mechanics and is rather special doesn't know if you can fly from planet to planet as grab driving is much quicker only takes a few seconds apparently weapon mods combined with skills are really diverse said that he felt like iron man at one stage you can get bounties put on you but there are ways to undo them museum on new atlantis explains the lore of the game the colony war what happened to earth etc says the boost pack skill is really important and fun yes i've kind of noticed the boost pack skill will probably be one of my most upgraded perks early on adoring fan cannot become a robot lol there's an enormous amount of creatures he has no clue how many are in the game for somebody like myself that's really looking forward to the beast hunting part of the game i am excited for that also has no clue how long it would take to 100 the game says after 150 hours he isn't even slightly close lots of mod support post launch mission boards can ask you to build outposts on planets he gave an hilarious example where the mission board gave him a quest to take two people across to a different planet space taxi after five hours he found the two people still on board his ship and realized he had completely forgotten to take them to their destination lots of easter eggs as you would expect across the game no level cap he thinks starter guides are coming out according to the german interviewer no clue when people on pc who have played the game early have said performance is smooth there was also a gq article that actually got put out and i'll put the link down below but if you didn't see that there were a few things in that gq article that was really kind of interesting to hear that we hadn't heard from kind of some previous information but in the first paragraph really todd howard was talking with the author and todd howard kind of talks about how you know trying to find bugs in the game and blinking and how some of the characters were kind of blinking a little bit too long but that's that kind of attention to detail i guess to get from that part of the interview where you can see they're really paying a really close close attention to a lot of the little things and that really kind of gives me a lot of hope about a lot of the feel for Starfield is going to be pretty polished another part that they actually talked about in that article really was about terror morphs the game's main alien threat so yeah, that was kind of an interesting one to kind of hear and talk about. And that wasn't Todd Howard talking about that. That was really the author talking about it in the article. So that was kind of interesting to hear. So we hadn't heard that before. The article also mentions how the gun feel feels more like a Destiny than a Fallout. And if you've played either one of those games before, Destiny's gun feel does feel amazing. And Fallout, not so much. So it is kind of nice to hear him actually make that reference. Also later on in the article talks about how planets and moons have their own time and their own rotation around the different suns in the galaxy of starfield so that was actually kind of cool to hear and if you do want to hear more or read more through the article i'll leave the link to the gq website down below okay now we have the phil spencer interviews now we did hear him talk several interviews i mean he's the big guy at xbox you're going to get a lot of interviews with him talking about different things and his first interview actually started off with the xbox live stream team and one of the first things he was kind of talking about was how very rare it is to have an opportunity 
opportunity like this to launch a game with this much buzz and hype about it as he's talking about starfield and even he kind of recognizes that this is probably going to be the only one that will be this big while he's the head of xbox and probably won't have another big one like this he also goes on to talk about the id at xbox and really kind of the changes that needed to happen before it was released and how successful it has been since id at xbox actually has come out and it's been 10 years since id at xbox has actually been out and really he's talking about one of the biggest successes that has come from id at xbox Fortnite. and later on in the interview he went on to kind of talk about how you know he wants everybody to be able to play xbox games on any device you choose not just xbox consoles but if you do choose xbox consoles he wants to make sure there are no limitations it wants to be the best hardware it can be so those were some of the main takeaways from the interview with xbox he then actually did a couple of interviews with ign's destin and one of the first things he talks about is xbox is finalizing its acquisition of activision blizzard but the only thing holding it up is the c CMA, the regulatory body in England that oversees competition, much like the US FTC, and that Xbox has made a deal to sell Activision Blizzard streaming rights to Ubisoft upon closing the deal, and that this should suffice the CMA and would expect the deal to close somewhat soon. He goes on to talk about how Xbox Series consoles are at the end of the beginning and talked about how the supply constraint issues that kind of lengthened the beginning. He went on to add, we are starting to see games from devs that are are starting to take full advantage of the xbox series hardware he then goes on to add better graphics and more realistic feel for games going forward and also no mid-generation xbox series console refresh or at least nothing to announce at this time and if you haven't heard baldur's gate 3 is coming to xbox series consoles but series s won't have split screen phil also talked about how this is a clarity issue that they can learn from when talking about the xbox series s and x parity he goes on to mentioned that some of the talk about the parody hurting the series consoles is coming from fan side as to why games aren't coming to the console and that xbox needs to be better with communication on those topics another topic that was brought up was game pass Phil admits that Game Pass isn't the best path for every game. Mentions devs with AAA budgets would probably be better skipping Game Pass. But it's the smaller devs that get a real deal of benefiting from launching on Game Pass as it provides them clarity. So there you go. That is just about everything that we have seen about Starfield. Even some Xbox stuff there at the end from the past few days. And I'll put a lot of links down below. That way if there's anything that kind of intrigued you and you want to go see a little bit more of the details you know you can definitely go hit those links or whatever and go see a little bit more of that but i tried to wrap this up as quick as possible so there you go and we are down to four days before starfield early access launch all righty take care